1961, artist Klaus Oldenburg left the gallery, setting up shop at 107 East 2nd Street near 1st Avenue. There, he sold the common fares of a bustling neighborhood dime store. Customers could walk in off the street and purchase anything from a slice of pie to a pair of pantyhose, from a girdle to a candy bar. The peculiar thing about Oldenburg's store was that every piece of merchandise, every donut and sneaker and ice cream sandwich, had been fashioned from plaster and chicken wire. In this invented retail setting, Oldenburg broke from what was traditionally considered art, specifically challenging the notion that the subject and content of art had to be profound or esoteric. Oldenburg was chiefly concerned with conflating art with everyday life. His festive and celebratory transgression across the accepted boundaries of art focused on the mundane and commonplace. He challenged the traditional conception of art by replicating quotidian objects in extraordinary ways. Through his work, he encouraged the viewer to look with fresh eyes at safety pins, bananas, buttons, and matches. Not only did Oldenburg rethink the subject of art, he also reinvented the setting within which it was to live. Oldenburg chose not to sequester his art away in galleries and museums. He wanted his art to live in the real world. He wanted it in parks, on street corners, and in people's hands. Oldenburg declared, I am for an art that comes out of a chimney like black hair and scatters in the sky. I am for art you can sit on, art you can pick your nose with, art you stub your toes on. I am for the art of conversation between the sidewalk and a blind man's metal stick. I am for art that is flipped on and off with a switch. I am for the art of bright blue factory columns and blinking biscuit signs. I am for the art of crayons and weak gray pencil lead and grainy wash and sticky oil paint and the art of windshield wipers and the art of a finger on a cold window on dusty steel or in the bubbles on the side of a bathtub. Since Oldenburg's blurring of art and real life on the shelves of a small East Village store, the prevailing notion of what constitutes art in concept and material has only broadened. A flood of new arts has taken over. New subjects, new media, new technologies, and new ways of thinking have surfaced to perpetuate the idea that art is strictly broader than classical conceptions would have it seem. While Oldenburg hoped to situate art in the midst of everyday life, the gallery that he so bravely eschewed has not died. In fact, galleries in major cities around the world have proliferated and still house the most precious pieces of artwork. What has changed is the notion of what work is deserving of gallery and museum space. In this sense, Oldenburg was right. You can make art out of plaster. You can make art about hamburgers. Works that before 1960 would not have been found in a gallery now adorn the walls of the most important museums in the world. Oldenburg could never have imagined the explosion he helped to set off and that is still echoing in the halls of museums and galleries around the world. For all of its prescience, Oldenburg's manifesto is, I think, overdue for an update. I am for an art that gets your attention and questions your understanding. I am for the art of formaldehyde and dead things. I am for an art that keeps kids occupied for more than 10 minutes. I am for an art that wants to get away with something. I am for an art that pisses people off and makes people sick. I am for an art that is stark raving mad. I am for an art that makes barbarians of all of us. I am for an art that forces people to talk, that makes the papers and fills the room. I am for an art that cuts people and makes them bleed. I am for an art that pokes and prods and won't leave you alone. I am for an art that gives tools to ordinary people to do with them what they will. I am for an art that questions your morals, that gives you a choice. I am for an art with a victim and a perpetrator. I'm for a confrontational art, an unrehearsed art. 
an art that challenges the relationship between the viewer and the performer. I am for an art that gives and then quickly takes back. I am for an art that is forgiving and scary and permits the unthinkable. I am for the art that goes on in your head. I am for an art that looks different no matter how many times you see it. I am for an art that is plexiglass and cubic and a little bit wet. I'm for condensation art and evaporation art. I'm for unstable and therapeutic art. I'm for light art, shadow art, motion art, and reflection art. I'm for an art that converses with its audience and reacts to its environment. I am for an art that needs you. I'm for a surreal and magical art. I'm for the art of your dreams. I'm for an art that is shiny and plastic and manufactured. I am for an art that is made of zeros and ones and flattened with a computer program. I am for an art you can put on a flash drive. I am for an art that offends the classicists and makes the kids grin. I am for an art that jumps off the gallery wall and lingers in the background of a computer screen. I'm for melting art. I'm for ephemeral art. I'm for street hustler art and scam art and rip-off art. I'm for an art that you can make and you can make and you can make and you probably already made. I'm for invisible art. I'm for intangible art. I'm for breathable art and art blown away by the wind. I'm for an art that might as well not have been created. I'm for an art that only exists in the mind. I'm for the art that is spoken and the art that is written down. I'm for a running art, a falling art, and a flying art. I'm for exploding art and neon art. I'm for an art that makes me nervous. I'm for DVD art, CD art, and streaming art. I'm for an art that grows and needs to be trimmed. I'm for licking art and chewing art, biting art, and eating art. I'm for strawberry art, mint art, cinnamon, and spearmint art. I'm for well-behaved art and art that gets people arrested. I'm for delicious art. I'm for art that costs $50 million and art that costs 50 cents. I'm for incomplete art. I'm for an art that you have to walk around in circles and an art that touches the ceiling. I'm for an art that smells and an art that screams. I'm for art that leaves its mark. I'm for frame art and floor art and art that tears holes in the walls.